parasites come in two flavors, inside and outside. The ones that attack your outside are easy to spot and most of the time easy to get rid of. You can literally see it, attack it, and remove it. Internal parasites are the worst nightmare fuel nature has ever pressured into existence. They slip on inside you and zap you of your essences. When you think of getting worms, I'm betting leeches aren't the thing you're thinking of. And yet, there are a bunch of leeches that infiltrate your body and suck your blood. Just one of these horrifying parasites is Dinobdala ferox, the terribly savage leech. Leeches have a long history with humans. We've played host to these little parasites probably as long as we've existed, but we've also taken to using them for their most disgusting feature. They subsist off blood. Humans have used leeches in medicine for thousands of years, especially back when people thought that the human body had four types of humors, or liquids, vital to life. In order to heal your sickness, your humors needed to be balanced, so they slapped on some leeches to suck out some blood. This obviously didn't work, but leeches do have some medical properties in their saliva that make them such good parasites. In fact, they're some of the cleanest parasites around, only infecting people with disease if they throw up their last dinner into your blood system. Many leeches you may encounter are external, ectoparasites. They attach themselves with a biological hypodermic needle installed in their faces and go to town sucking you. However, there is an entire lineage of leeches that were pressured by their environment to take a different, longer route. You see, these leeches don't have the robust hypothermic needle-like proboscis of the other leeches. Instead, their mouths are full of little jaws lined by little teeth that they use to gouge, scrape, hacksaw, or slice a wound into your flesh, suction their face onto the wound, expel a bunch of desensitizing substances in their saliva, and tuck in for a good long suck. Due to their weaker jaws, they need to find a way to get really close to a blood supply and anchor themselves in. It needed to be a place where they wouldn't be easily disturbed. That place happened to be our mucous membranes. How else to get to the mucous membranes than to literally crawl inside the body? Yeah, these leeches are adapted to slip into the body via the eyes, mouth, nose, vagina, rectum, and urethra. Ugh. Though, different species tend to differ on their adaptations or preferences for which orifice they enter. How nice of them. One of these many species is Dinobdala ferox, which is Latin for ferociously terrible leech, for it is the most reported and studied internal leech parasite of humans. The thing has been known to science since 1896 when Raphael Blanchard, a pioneering scientist in the field of medical zoology, published a paper on what he called Whitmania ferox, a new species of a leech genus that he had named back in 1884. Over the last 140-ish years, different species applied to the Whitmania genus have been found to be too distinct to operate as just species within this genus, which today includes Whitmania acranulata, edentula, levis, and pigra. The Whitmania ferox species ended up one of the outliers, renamed to the much better Dinobdala ferox by leech specialist John P. Moore in 1927. Phylogenetic analyses done in the last 20 or 30 years have found these leeches to belong to the family Praobdelidae, along with Limnobdela, Mixobdela, Paraproobdela, and Tyranobdela, all internal nesties that love to thrive in your moistest oysters. Their name translates to English as terribly savage leech because of how intimate their parasitic relationship is with humans. Just to have this in a video form, symbiosis describes any relationship between two different organisms in close physical association. It's a blanket term that includes parasitism, commensalism, and much more. So, a parasite is also in a symbiotic relationship with its host. Symbiotic doesn't automatically mean beneficial. With that out of the way, Dinobdala ferox can be described as a flat leech with a large sucker butt and varying in color from greens and grays to reds and browns and near black. 
they only reach around 7 centimeters in length and prefer to live in the nose or respiratory tract, but some have been found in the eye. Though maybe it would relieve you a little to know they don't live directly in the eye, but more so under the eyelid or the folds around the eye. They can be found throughout Southeast Asia and Taiwan especially in all sorts of freshwater sources, almost always stagnant and dirty. They enter their chummy human host as a wee little baby that makes it physically easier to do so, after all. They usually enter their host at a length of less than a centimeter before engorging themselves on blood and maturing into that 7 centimeter chunky monkey I mentioned earlier. As part of the jawed leech lineage, Dinoptila ferox uses a mouth of three jaws arranged in a Y shape to slice and dice a wound into your mucous membranes while secreting their special anesthetizing, vasodilating, anti-inflammatory saliva to keep that good red juice flowing. All in all, these particular leeches aren't like super gross or super dangerous. There are many leeches that go inside you and live in your moist parts. I just think this one is neat for its scientific name. That aside, it happened to be the target organism for a scientist to experiment on himself with. Voluntarily infecting himself with baby Dinobdila ferox to document the entire process of their parasitism and also to figure out ways to get rid of them. Though these leeches have been known to science for over a century and have been infecting people for far longer, the precise step-by-step -step nature of their infection wasn't broadly known in the same way as fleas, lice, or ticks, or any of the other tiny microorganisms that actually go inside our bodies to cause us harm. I'm willing to bet this has a lot to do with their endemism in third world countries. 2019 saw the publication of a paper by Yi Te Lai's experience in injecting himself with the naughty little Riz thief. The Parasitology Journal published work specifically outlines that Lai infected himself with three juvenile leeches three separate times as different trials and then made sure to monitor his blood count and the parasite with a nifty little nasal endoscopy. While he had the creepy crawlers sucking on his insides, he reported symptoms of nasal congestion, mild stinging, and some nosebleeds. He noted that the bleeding tended to go away a week or so after applying the leech. At the end of his trials, he found that his blood levels didn't really change much as he was able to cope with the amount of blood being taken. Another interesting thing is that it was hard for him and his doctors to actually witness the leech with the endoscopy. They were shy creatures with just enough wit or sense to avoid detection most of the time. The most ironically funny or disturbing parts of Lai's trials was the activities of the leeches under certain conditions. You see, these leeches like to leave their host when conditions are right to do so, those conditions being wetness and darkness. When the leech has had its fill, it waits for darkness and moistness to leave the host and that happened to lie when he was taking showers or going to the theater. The leeches would sneak out of his nose at these times, though since Lai was the scientist in all of this, he just coaxed the beast back into their home. Once these parasites were fully out of Lai, he preserved the bastards in ethanol and submitted them to the Academy Sinica collection in Taiwan. He even recorded videos of himself with the leeches going into his nose and coming out of his nose. So nonchalant about it. Wish I had that level of confidence when it comes to things living inside me. That's about it for this leech. Dinobdala ferox really doesn't have much unique to it that isn't also a characteristic of its close relatives. None of those relatives are very large because they have to fit inside a host. The biggest leeches are those that can sit on the outside of the host. Maybe I will eventually get to the largest leech alive today, the Amazon Giant Leech. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.